Four millicent, no film removing pepsodent. Her smile grew dim and she lost her him. So folks don't be like millicent. Get pepsodent. And now pepsodent, film removing pepsodent, presents my friend Irma. Created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. You know, a wise man once said, you cannot tell wherein lays the pearl by the looks of the oyster. If you study my roommate, Irma Peterson, you'll know it's true. Because you can look at that pretty head of hers all day long, but there's no way to prove there's a brain inside of it. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, because I love Irma. But there are times when... Well, take the other day. I was reading the paper, and I said to Irma, Listen to this, honey, listen. Radio-guided shells are being used in war. And Irma said... That's ridiculous. What good is a radio in a shell once it lands, the program's over? <laughs> well? <laughs> I don't know about guided missiles, but if you want to know something that's good on the bristles of your toothbrush, why don't you try Pepsodent? Ah, uh, now you're talking, Jane. Pepsodent gets your teeth brighter by far. That's right, folks. Brighter by far. And the latest scientific luster tests prove it. Pepsodent gets teeth brighter than the average of all other leading toothpaste combined. You see, Pepsodent has something no other toothpaste can give you. An exclusive, brighter polishing ingredient. So if you want a smile that's brighter by far, there's only one thing to do. Start using Pepsodent right away. And remember, brighter teeth are cleaner teeth. Much less likely to decay. again, and the kid is walking on air. I've never seen her so happy. That's why I'm watching her like a hawk. When she gets giddy, anything can happen. Uh-oh, she's turned the shower on. I better check. Irma, you've done it again. Done what? Taking a shower with your clothes on. <laughs> oh, gosh. Help me, Jane. Okay, turn around. Irma, what's the matter with you? Oh, I don't know. I guess I'm just excited about having Al back. So wonderful to be in love. I can hear my heart beating in my head. <laughs> well, get it back down where it belongs. It's making you punchy. Huh? Never mind. Here's your robe, honey. Oh, thanks, Jane. Uh, will you help me pick out a dress for tonight? Sure, sweetie. <clears throat> well, where is the big sport taking you tonight? Oh, dinner and dancing. Dinner and dancing. You kidding? What's he going to do? Split a hot dog with you in front of a jukebox? <laughs> of course not. This is the real thing. He got a job today. Yes, I know. And I have just been made head elephant girl for the king of Siam. <laughs> well, I'll get it. Hello? Oh, hello, Al, honey. What a coincidence. You know, I was just telling Jane about your new job. How is it? You quit? <laughs> oh, why, Al? It's not steady. What do you mean it's not steady? Oh, they have the right to lay you off when you're 65. <laughs> no, don't you come over tonight. <laughs> there go the tears again. You know, I'm going to get you a pilot's license and rent you out as an artificial rainmaker. <laughs> but, Jane, I can't help it. I love him. Oh, Cookie, he's nothing but a lazy bum. I know, but he's so sweet. Besides, he has other qualities. Sure, so does a flat tire. It gives a patch something to do. <laughs> Sweetie, I, I don't want to start a lecture, but do you think it's right for a full-grown, perfectly healthy man to make loafing a lifetime career? No, I guess not. You know what, Jane? Something just occurred to me. I don't think Al is normal. <laughs> All right. 
Now that the two of you have discovered the secret of your compatibility, <laughs> what are you going to do about it? Well, I don't know, Jane, but I've got to do something because I love him. Irma, if you feel that strongly about him, maybe you ought to get him to a psychiatrist. Psychiatrist? Yeah. Who knows? Maybe when Al was a baby, he was frightened by a time clock. <laughs> well, what does a psychiatrist do? Well, honey, they're doctors. They heal sick minds. Maybe Al has some kind of psychosis or neurosis. He, he might be a paranoiac or even a schizophrenic. No, Jen, if I'm not mistaken, his whole family are Republicans. Oh. <laughs> no, honey, I, I don't think that's the blame. It's quite possible that somewhere in Al's head there's a mental block that makes him hate work. Where did I put that address of Dr. Melvin? He's a reputable psychiatrist. Here it is. Here. All right, Jane, but how am I going to tell Al he's a blockhead without hurting his feelings? <laughs> Irma, when you get him to the doctor, ask him if he's got a special rate for two and give yourself a treat. <laughs> Come in. It's only me, Professor Kopatkin. <laughs> Hello, Jane and Irma, my two little gamblers. One flipping a coin to heads, the other with a head that's flipped. Professor. Oh, excuse me, Jane, a little joke to celebrate April Fool's Day. Yesterday was April Fool's Day. Oh, no, it must be today, because when I turned my faucet on, water came out. <laughs> Yeah, the same thing happened to Irma a few minutes ago, only she had her clothes on. What? Mm. Professor, do you ever go to a psychiatrist? Me? Never. In this, I don't believe. They make you lay back and close your eyes and tell the man your life story. And for this, they charge you good money, yet. You know, for a dollar, I can do the same thing in the barber shop and get a shave in the bargain. <laughs> Professor, don't discourage her. She wants Al to see a psychiatrist, and I'm all for it. Well, now, maybe a psychiatrist might do him some good. You've tried everything else. Like the time you got him into a game of blind man's bluff and walked him over to the employment office. I was seen with my little darling. Oh, my goodness, Irma, if you're going to a psychiatrist, take me. I need treatment, too. What? Yeah, I could swear I just heard the mating call of an elephant. <laughs> girls. Hello, Mrs. O'Reilly. My, you're in fine voice today. Thank you. I just love to sing the Tennessee Waltz. No, please, Mrs. O'Reilly, if you sing the Tennessee Waltz once more, Tennessee will waltz right out of the Union. <laughs> oh, don't be such an old sourpuss. It wouldn't hurt you to sing once in a while instead of playing those practical jokes on me all the time. Practical jokes? What did he do now? Well, I had a couple of my petticoats hanging on the line, and he put a sign on them. We'll sell to the highest bidder, complete set of sales for five masted scooter. <laughs> and I could have sold them, too, if they weren't an off-size. <laughs> Yes, that is so. Oh, please, now don't argue. I have a problem. Oh, I'm sorry, Irma, darling. What's wrong? Well, it's Al. Jane thinks if I take him to a psychiatrist, might help him keep a job. Well, I think it's very sensible. Irma, darling, them psychiatrists are doing wonderful work. I know they help me. Oh, did you go in for treatment? Yes. Years ago, I had a bad shock. And there was a period when I thought I was a chicken. <laughs> a chicken? Yes. I'd run around the house flapping my arms and clucking. <laughs> well, how did he cure you? Well, at that time, the price of eggs dropped so low, he convinced me that it wouldn't pay me to stay in the business. That's <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, when you go to a psychiatrist's office, just what do they do? Well, you lay back on a couch and the doctor asks questions about your life. Takes you way back to your early childhood. How much food do you take with you? <laughs> food? And Mrs. O'Reilly, if anybody goes back to your childhood, it would be impossible to make that long trip without something to eat on the way. <laughs> oh, mind your own 
own business. Uh, my darling, I hope the psychiatrist can do Al some good. But you've got to be careful how you handle the situation. I do? Yes. I had trouble with my late husband, Clancy, when I tried to get him to see a psychiatrist. Why? Did he need treatment? Well, it started when I was his nurse. He just had an operation on his eyes, and in the hospital we fell madly in love and got married. <laughs> oh, how romantic. He fell in love without ever seeing you. Yes. But when we came home and removed the bandages from his eyes, he began to crack. <laughs> I walked into the room, he tried to put the bandages back on. Yeah, and from this comes the expression, a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> from the book, What Makes Clancy Run. <laughs> oh, quiet, you. This is not helping our problem. Gosh, I don't know how to tell Allie needs a psychiatrist because, gosh, he's so proud of his mind. Well, I don't blame him. I always thought it was valuable. You did? Sure, I firmly believe that someday there'll be a price on his head. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jane. You've given me confidence. I'm going right out and talk to him. Oh, here's the place. The Waldorf. I hope he's in. Yes, lady, can I help you? Is this the Waldorf pool room? Yeah. Hey, you're an Al's girl, ain't you? Yeah. Is he here? Third aisle right, fifth table. Thank you, sir. Hiya, chicken. Hello, Al, honey. Be with you in a minute. One more shot and I'll have the table clean. Oh, Al, can't you make your shot and clean the table later? <laughs> I want to talk to you. Made it. Now, what's on your mind, chicken? No, Al, nothing's on my mind. I'm thinking about your mind. Well, what do you mean? Uh, I want to take you to a psychiatrist with me. Me to a psychiatrist? What for? I ain't got no frustrations. <laughs> I'm a happy guy. Well, how can you be happy when I'm so miserable? Chicken, why should you be miserable? You got me, ain't you? <laughs> well, I don't like the way you behave. You don't? Uh, maybe you got one of those diseases in your head, like paragoric... Oh, new roses. Or you might even be a, a wiener schnitzel. Chicken, a wiener schnitzel is something with an egg on it. Well, maybe you're just in the early stages. Yeah. You ever go around saying, cluck, 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 Chicken, who have you been talking to? Well, maybe it's something you don't know about, something that will happen in your early childhood. Well, of course, when I was a baby, I did fall out of my high chair. Then that's it. You couldn't go to work that day. You've been afraid to take a job ever since. <laughs> that's a lot of malarkey. But, Al, you like to sleep all day. I think that's abnormal. Oh, you do? Do you know how long a grizzly bear sleeps in the winter? Four months. And when you go to the zoo, do you ever see a sign on his cage saying, Sorry, bear out to see a psychiatrist? <laughs> no, chicken. Forget that stuff. Then you can forget about me. What? If you don't think enough of me to see a psychiatrist, you and I are through. Oh, well, chicken, since you put it that way, okay, I'll go. Oh, Al, you're wonderful. <laughs> Here's your dress. Yeah, now, hold it. When a man is condemned, he should at least have the privilege of naming his own executioner. I'll get my own psychiatrist. Well, I know you won't be sorry, Al. And when they ask you to make your mind a blank, don't be frightened. Just think of me. Yeah. <laughs> Dear Millicent, sweet Millicent, now she's using Pepsodent. Her smiles are light and her romance bright. And if you want to be like Millicent, get Pepsodent. For Pepsodent gets your teeth brighter. 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 Yes, Pepsodent gets teeth brighter than the average of all other leading toothpaste combined. Test after test proves it. And remember, brighter teeth are cleaner teeth and less susceptible to decay. No other toothpaste has Pepsodent's brighter polishing ingredient and exclusive film-removing formula with irium. So remove dull film that makes teeth dingy. Remove acid film that causes decay. Use Pepsodent to get your teeth brighter. 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 Yes, brighter by far. 
like Millicent. Get Pepsodent. Get Pepsodent. Dr. Melvin, the psychiatrist I recommended, he's picked one of his own. And if he's anything like any of the other medical men Al knows, I don't want to be there. You know, he took Irma to one of his doctor friends one time. You know what the examination consisted of? He lifted her foot and said there was nothing wrong with her. All she needed was a new set of horseshoes. (laughs) Oh, this is one cookie who will never trust that Al too far. Come in. Hello, Al. You sent for me. Yeah, Mushy, I need your help. Have to see a psychiatrist. Well, Al, that's nothing to monkey about. If you need eyeglasses, get them. (laughs) No, Mushy, psychiatrists don't make glasses. They work on your head. Oh, I guess I was thinking of a (laughs) chiropodist. What's wrong with your head, Al? Did you walk under a blackjack? (laughs) Nothing's wrong with my head. Uh, I'm just doing this to please chicken. Yeah. But got to do it my way. Who are you calling, Al? Uh, Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> ah, got a problem. You know a good, competent psychiatrist, honest, trustworthy, and reliable, who will do anything for a buck? You do? Dr. R.B. Pringile, Ph.D., L.L.D., and S.S. Oh, what's the S.S. for, Joe? Oh, right now he's in Sing Sing. <laughs> No, need somebody right away. You see, got to find somebody who will tell Chicken that if I take a job, I may drop dead immediately. What? You think you got the right man for me? Well, who is he? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Your wife's brother, Leonard, but he's an upholsterer. <laughs> oh, oh, he has an extra couch and owns a frock coat. Good deal, Joe. Well, look, tell him to put up a sign, Dr. Leonard, psychiatrist. What? Spell it? Um... S I K I T R A S T. <laughs> so long, Joe, and thanks for everything. Oh, that Joe is one in a million. Always comes through. Yeah, I remember the time when he saved my life. Joe saved your life? Yeah. By mistake, I made a date with my girlfriend Violet and my girlfriend Libby at the same time in front of the same drugstore. <laughs> you know, they both loved me, Al. Well, did they know about each other? No. Ain't I a dog? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What happened? Well, I was sure both girls had killed me when they spotted Joe. I give him the high sign. Quick as a flash, he robs the drugstore, slips the gun into my pocket, turns me out to the cops, and before I know it, I'm safe in jail. <laughs> What's he doing for you, Al? Uh, nothing that drastic. Yeah. Look, Mushy, you can help. Oh, sure, Al. What do I got to do? You go see Leonard the upholster in the Baxter building on 4th Ave. Uh-huh. Tell him I'm a friend of Joe's, and then when I get down there for a treatment with chicken, uh-huh. he's got to tell me I'm allergic to work. All right, Al. <laughs> Gee, you smart. <laughs> Thanks, Mushy. Uh, too bad you wasn't a school teacher. You could have done a lot for kids. <laughs> so... <laughs> Attorney at law. Oh, hi, you chicken. Alzy Walsy. Oh, hello, Al, honey. Did you get an appointment with a psychiatrist? Everything's fixed, chicken. It's Dr. Leonard and the upholstery. I mean, the, uh, the Baxter building. Meet you there at 5 o'clock, huh? Oh, Al, I know it's going to make a big difference in our lives. Sure, chicken. And you can depend on me. Whatever that doctor prescribes, I will do. You will? Yep. If he wants me to cut out smoking, we'll cut out smoking. Wants me to cut out drinking, we'll cut out drinking. Atta boy, Al. Wants me to cut out necking, we'll cut out necking. Al, do you think we're doing the right thing? <laughs> Can't back out now, chicken. And if he wants me to go to work, I'll go to work. And of course, if he don't want me to go to work, I won't go to work, huh? Oh, Al, you're so brave. <laughs> Miss Peterson. Miss Peterson. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Clyde. I've got to hang up now, Al. I'll see you at the doctor's. Goodbye. Come here, Miss Peterson. Yes, sir. Look at this letter. 
I told you to order a Maytag washing machine for my wife. I said Maytag, not April tag. <laughs> I thought it'd be cheaper if we got an older model. I didn't ask you to think. I said May tag, and that's what we want. Well, then you'll have to wait 30 days. May won't be here for another month. <laughs> another month of this, and I won't be here. You get that letter out immediately. All right, but I'll have to wait until the carbon paper dries. What? Well, every time I touch it, my fingers get dirty, so I'm washing all the black stuff off the paper. <laughs> you idiots! That black stuff is carbon. That's what makes the copies. Now, how are you going to get duplicates of my letters? Well, I have a camera. We can take pictures. Oh, no. No, no, no. Mr. Clay, why are you shaking that way? I just took a Samba lesson from Arthur Murray. <laughs> Listen, you idiot. Now, you... calm down, Mr. Clyde. Uh, can I get you a glass of water? No, the last time you gave me a glass of water, you were using the water cooler for an aquarium, and I swallowed three goldfish. <laughs> you better get those letters out. I'm leaving. Well, where are you going? I don't know. I may get a crew haircut, lie about my age, and get myself drafted. Goodbye. <laughs> J. Clyde, attorney at law, Miss Peterson speaking. Hi, sweetie, this is me, Jane. Oh, hello, Jane. Honey, I have a date to go dancing with Steve tonight at the spring festival. I don't have any white shoes. Could I borrow yours? Oh, certainly, Jane, but you have to be awfully careful not to step on Steve's toes. What? I had ice skates attached to those shoes. <laughs> oh, no. No, sweetie, not those shoes. Your white dancing pumps. Oh, those, sure, Jane. They're in the clothes closet. Thanks, honey. Did Al see the psychiatrist yet? No, I'm meeting him there at 5 o'clock. Gosh, if Al does all right, maybe maybe I should take a treatment, too. No, Cookie. Psychiatrists are pretty busy these days. They don't have time to go to each other for treatments. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Gee, Leonard, how do you rate this nice office? <laughs> yeah, the dopey landlord don't even know I'm here. Uh-huh. I took down the for rent sign and put up the psychiatrist sign I made. Oh, that's real funny. <laughs> 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 uh, look, don't forget, when Al comes here, you got to say he must never work or he will die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you told me all that. Uh-huh. I looked up all them words a real psychiatrist use. Yeah. Uh, 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 frustrations, uh, complex... Uh, uh, subconscious. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what time is it, Mushy? Uh, four thirty. Well, watch your store, will you? I'm going out to put two bucks on a nag. Gosh, I wish I had two bucks. Oh, a full-length mirror. Oh, you beautiful doll. <laughs> you great, big, beautiful doll. <laughs> I. Uh... Pardon me. Yeah? I seen your sign. Are you a psychiatrist? Was you ever to a psychiatrist before? No. I'm the psychiatrist. <laughs> We're having a special sale today, two bucks. Well, I don't know if you can help me. I have headaches, and my boss said I should see somebody. Well, just what seems to be the trouble. Well, they say I have a complex. That's right, you've got a beautiful complex. <laughs> what kind of soap do you use? Huh? Never mind. Now, let's see. Who's supposed to lie on the couch? You or me? I think it's you. Would you like to lie on the couch? <laughs> All right. But that'll be 15 cents extra. My bookie lives... My bookie lives in New Jersey, and I gotta make a toll call. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean, it's uh, just a federal tax. <laughs> now, lie on this couch and relax. Try to sleep, will you? All right. Yeah, I'll help you. Rock a baby on the treetop. Go to sleep, my baby. Hey, just a minute. Huh? Where are you going with my pocketbook? Uh, I was just looking for your subconscious. Oh, yeah? Well, if you ask me, I think you're a phony. I want my pocketbook. Hey, Mushy, what's going on here? Uh, I'm going to call a cop. Hey, what are you people doing in here? Uh Oh, what's the landlord? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Davis. Never mind the excuses. This place has been rented. Get out of here, all of you. Go on. I'm sorry, Mr. Stevens. I thought the door was locked. Oh, that's all right. I understand. Well, by the way, that sign you wanted saying employment agency will be ready tomorrow. That's all right. I'll just sit at this desk and do some preliminary work. Don't you worry, Mr. Davis. I'll be a good tenant. 
I'm going to have the most successful employment agency on this street. Well, Chicken, this is the address. Now, remember, when we walk in, whatever the psychiatrist tells me to do, I will do. That's the spirit, Al. Neither you nor me will question the decision. I promise, Al. Okay, let's go. Well, well, good day, sir. I am Al, and I am ready. What do you suggest? Well, there's nothing wrong with you that a good job won't fix. <laughs> well, report tomorrow morning at the shipyards. Oh, Al, isn't that wonderful? And Jane will be back in a minute, but first, this is Wendell Niles reminding you that your best toothpaste buy is the economy size Pepsodent. Almost one third of a pound, only 63 cents. So get Pepsodent without delay for a smile that's brighter by far. Brighter? 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 Yes, Pepsodent gets teeth brighter than the average of all other leading toothpastes combined. Like Millicent, get Pepsodent. Yes, that's a dent. Well, Al threw a boomerang and it almost knocked his head off. I don't know whether he's going to take the job, but the whole thing had a great effect upon Irma. She thinks psychiatrists are just wonderful. In fact, she went to one today. What happened, honey? Oh, a bunch of psychiatrists came in the room and looked at me. I don't think they wash their hair very often. What do you mean? All the time they're examining me, they just stood around there scratching their heads. <laughs> well, they just scratch their heads. Most of the time, I bang mine against the wall. So would you, if you lived with my friend, Irma. My Friend Irma is a Sky Howard production. Mark Levy writes the script with Stanley Adams and Roland McLean and is brought to you by Pepsi and Toothpaste with Aerial, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conried was heard as Professor Kropotkin and Gloria Gordon as Mrs. O'Reilly. Music was under the direction of Lloyd Luskin. Marie Wilson is starred as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. Remember, your friend Irma says... All my friends buy Pepsi <laughs> Clean on all 13. I'm happy and I'm singing the Life Boy song. Are you safe on all 13 areas of your skin where you can get B.O.? Life Boy Health Soap deodorizes all these 13 areas, stops B.O. before it begins, stops it up to 48 hours. Doctors prove Life Boy gets skin cleaner than any other leading soap. Get Life Boy, use it daily. <laughs> Here in the President's Registered Trademark of Purified Elsa Sulfur. All over America, important progress is being made against cancer through the American Cancer Society's vital research and education programs. These major efforts to control cancer can continue only with your help. Strike back at this disease. Join the 1951 Cancer Crusade. Support the ACS in its life-saving work. Mail your generous contribution now to cancer. C A N. C-E-R, care of your local post office. Be with us again next week, and once again, Pepsodin brings you my friend Irma. This is Wendell Niles speaking, and this is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.